What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Loudmouth MMA Podcast. Uh, the reason why I started off so unceremoniously is because this card is not going to be fun to talk about. We're going to do we're it. Back. We're, we're back. We're back. Listen, first of all, we're I really back. love seeing... I'm looking right now at Sh- Mr. Sean I has. Hello. How you doing? And I'm looking at Mr. Tony Fignano. There we go. Fajano. Mm. Okay, no, 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 no. You, you had it, it right the first time. time. You had it the first time. Fajano. Fagia- Fagia- move Fagiano. past this name because you're going to have more problems. But... Fagnano. <laughs> uh, move past there we go. You see, you got to get the hand movement in there. Uh, Fagnano. The Once in you, there, you, as long as you do it. Uh, yeah. But anyway, so I'm looking at your guys' faces, and I appreciate it. I, I love, uh, you know, reuni- our month-long reunion, essentially. Uh, so that's great. However, this was the best the UFC could throw together to like welcome us back to MMA. I mean, good lord! It's a Chechnyan showcase. There's a lot of interesting Chechnyan fighters. For those of us who love combat sambo, Kyle. Yeah, <laughs> looking forward to it. <laughs> I actually enjoy it. So whatever. Uh, okay. Let's just get into it, uh, and I'm and I'm not trying to sound, <laughs> I sound so defeated. <laughs> okay, the reason why I sound so defeated it's not just because this is just not a very good card, and we haven't had the UFC in so long that it's just like this is not the welcome back that I want. I'm also defeated because I can't pronounce half of these people's names, and it's very upsetting to me because this is what my nightmares are made out of. I already have such a hard time pronouncing the names of people who I've seen them fight. There, there are people who I've seen every single one of their fights, and they fought six, seven times, and I still mess their names up. So, a card like this, where I don't—I've never seen half of these people fight. I don't know who any of these people are. I'm sure as hell not going to pronounce their names right. So. This is what nightmares are made out of. Let's just slog through this thing. Fortunately, Sean apparently is a linguistics major because he pretty much has all these names down. We've covered this. For whatever reason, Eastern European, Russian, <laughs> Chechnyan, I'm fine. You throw me anything Portuguese or Spanish, I'm I'm in a world of hurt. Yeah. Like like, like our five minute dissertation on Quinonis or Quinonis or <laughs> the fuck his name was. Made me money. I don't care. We got a lot of shit for that one, too. Is that the one we got a lot of shit for? Yeah, it was. Uh, what, and what the was... fight got canceled anyway. We yeah, did it again so did... two weeks later. Yeah, and then we, f- and then we f- messed it up again. Um, okay, so let's just kick off. Apparently, and I don't know why, but apparently Leon Edwards and Brian Barberena is actually kicking off the main card. According to, so w- we are using UFC.com. And in fact, as of right now, UFC.com has one fight wrong. But we're pretty sure we know the right fight, so when I get there, I'll point it out. But I'm pretty sure UFC.com still has a fight wrong. Uh, but anyway, they have Edwards Barbarina as being the fight that's kicking off the main card, which, honestly, given this card, probably should be the co-main. Um, but yeah. anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, so we got Leon Edwards, Brian Barbarina. Uh, Sean, it's been a hot minute, my friend. Give me your take. Oh, all these fights, some of these are just going to be... See, I like this one. I don't mind this fight. I don't like like Brian Barberin is a scrappy guy, and a lot of people like him. He just he, it's he's not, not, not my guy. Not do, not uh, I'm trying to get to my you. notes here. I'm also stalling for a second because oh, you're fine. Of course, when I, when I started researching this, everything was all out of order, so my notes are all jammed up. So Leon, the, the one thing that stands out to me in this fight is the odds. Leon Edwards probably shouldn't be a minus two seventy favorite against anyone, and he is against Brian Barberino. He's five and two in the UFC. He's got probably the he's got two good wins uh, in Vicente Luque, Tumanoff. He actually has a win over Dominic Waters, and he's excelled in wrestling. He has in those three wins I just mentioned: three takedowns, three takedowns, two takedowns. Not something you would think from him. On the other end, you got Barbarena, who got taken down twelve times by Colby Covington. 
but he got up 12 times against Colby Covington, which is something else. So I, oddly enough, this fight comes down to two things, the takedown defense of Barbarina and the pacing of Edwards. I hate for when he is in the feet, though, his, he, he doesn't throw a lot. So I like Barbarina, I think. I'm going to give him a small lean, especially, we'll talk about it later, but DraftKings, Edwards is 9000 No way should you pay that price for Edwards. I don't think he gets Barbarina out of there. Barbarina is tough. And Barbarina can just do enough scrappy things to pay off 7200 get a decision, or he, he could sub out Leon Edwards. It was odd to me how many takedowns Edwards has. It's kind of why I gave you the quick recap. I think Barbarina is a little tougher. I'm worried about the pacing in this fight and the scoring. Um, it could be Barbarina. If anyone's going to throw more volume, it'll be him. But stylistically, I, I have a feeling this is going to start out. It's going to be a slow start to our main card. So Barbarina is the pick. And usually I'm much more sure of a bunch of picks. And I'll, I'll, I will, as you like to say, Kyle, draw a hard line in the sand. It's hard with a few of these fights just because it's a lot of unknowns. I'll take Barbarina. DraftKings, he's easily the better play, and we'll move on. My fear with Barbarina on DraftKings, and we'll talk more at the end of the episode, but my, my fear with Barbarina on DraftKings is that he's going to be the chalk play. I mean, he's going to be the guy that everybody just clicks in there because even if you don't think he's going to win, his, his price is off. And he and of all the people that are in that range, it'd be really hard to argue that he does not have the best chance to win considering uh, his scrappiness. And, you know... They both have, I guess this was the thing that jumps out to me. One, Leon Edwards is a lot better than people think he is. He's a guy who I think has been, not disrespected isn't the right word, because he most certainly hasn't been disrespected, but it's just a guy that you don't hear anybody ever talk about him, and he has he's built up a nice little collection of wins here. Uh, they both have kind of huge outliers as far as being taken down, right? Where Usman took down... Leon Edwards, I think, six times. Nobody else had done that. Uh, and then uh, Colby Covington took Barbarina down 12 times, and no one else had done that. You know, the most other than that was Ellenberger with three against Barbarina. And I think uh, with Leon Edwards, I don't think anyone had really gotten more than one. So anyway, yeah. th- th- there's a lot of outliers there. Go ahead, Sean. Just stylistically, like, like for whatever reason, you, I try and always play a fight out in my head. Sure. I, I just see this being, for whatever reason, I keep seeing low volume. And on DraftKings, again, we'll get to it. There's going to be a lot of finish in this card because there's a lot of shit fighters, which means there's going to be a lot of finishes. The way the prices line up at the Stars and Scrub Week, because there is no mid-tier. There's tons of minus 300-plus favorites. So I don't, I don't see why you would... I mean, I'm probably not going to roster either of these guys, it's, except it's weird. maybe Barbarina and Cash. It's, maybe. it's weird that you're implying that Barbarina can't finish Leon Edwards, because that's what you're implying, and it's very weird to me. Brian Barbarina choked out Saves Northcutt. So if you're telling me that a man who could choke out Saves Northcutt can't choke out Leon Edwards, is that really what you're trying to tell me, Sean? You know, I thought you were serious until about halfway through. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, they, they, I think they both have... This is I find this fight to be interesting because to me it's either going to be almost exclu- exclusively standing up and punching or it's going to be almost exclusively takedowns. I, I don't think there's going to be a mix. I think either they're both going to have a stand and bang game plan or they're both going to have a grappling game plan. And I think if they both have a grappling, grappling game plan, I think both of them might get three takedowns or something. So I don't know. It's, it's interesting. Tony... Uh, didn't mean to leave you in the dust there. What are your thoughts on this? Oh, I, am I allowed to speak on this one? You are. Uh, you are. <laughs> I, I definitely see this one uh, playing out as kind of a more boring stand-up fight. Uh, Edwards is, is the you know the longer fighter here. Um, I, I think I think that Barbarina's best shot on the feet, at least, is to is to either clinch like like Usman showed. and pretty much control him obviously Guzman is a much you know one of the best grappler grapplers in the division so I'm not sure you know how successful that would be for Barbarina but it's definitely something to try out uh and then it's just it, he's gonna have to make it scrappy on the feet because Edwards is really a kickboxer that's kind of fallen in love with his wrestling and the op- what we usually hear 
um, you know, going for takedowns and stuff, which was really surprising to me as well. You guys already mentioned that. Um, but yeah, I, I see this, uh, you know, if Edwards is able to maintain a good game plan on the feet, he should be able to win here, but I don't think he should be a minus 300 favorite. I think that's a little crazy. Yeah. I, I definitely see him winning though. Hey, Tony, uh, wh- while we take, uh, I'm going to talk to Sean for another second here. Real quick, go into your settings and turn your mic down a little bit because I think what's happening is that your mic is really loud and it's causing you to peak. And when you peak, you go quiet. We can't hear you. I, I can see it on my end. So if you don't mind, just turn your mic down on your end and, and we'll see if that fixes the problem. Um, uh, Sean, is there anything else you want to say on that? This this is not a good opening fight to this card i totally agree with tony i mentioned it a few times i see this one playing out slow and i think it's going to be especially a, a bigger letdown than even usual because i think we'll be riding high from a um a string of finishes on the undercard mm, okay all right well listen i think i think it, and we'll talk about this obviously we'll talk about this at the end but i i i do think that um i do think the play might just be to avoid you know, to avoid playing Barbarana because I think he's going to be a chalk play. So I think your best move is to avoid him and roster construct without him because I think so many people, like, they're just going to kind of start there because his price doesn't make sense and he's very scrappy and, and so on and so forth. Uh, Tony, In tournaments, go, maybe. Yeah. Tony, go ahead and talk. We'll see if that fixed it. Hello? I think it might have fixed it. We'll see once we get on to the next fight here. I honestly don't know how to- Turned on my volume. Is See, it is this lower? I think so. I think you're good. Um, okay. Like I said, once once we get into the next fight, we'll we'll see it. It, it but you do sound a little quieter. Um, I don't know why it has that. It. I wish I could control it on, control it on my end, but I'm I'm using a different kind of software, so I'm unable to do it. Um, all right, moving on to the next fight. Marion Renault, who was supposed to fight, uh, Durandamine, uh, but Durandamine pulled a Durandamine and is no longer on the card. Uh, instead, she is replaced by Talita Bernardo. I believe that is how you pronounce it. Uh, she uh, she goes by a different name as well, right? Not a different name, but since she's Brazilian, there's more to the name, Sean. De, De Oliveira. Okay. Somewhere. All right. But anyway, um, make, making our UFC debut, uh, I, I don't know if either one of you have a lot of information on her. She's making her debut at age 30. Uh, which that could be a, a positive and a negative. She's five and one. Uh, you know that that's her very basic stats. Uh, do either one of you know much about her? Yeah, she. Um, so I read a little bit on her UFC bio today, and I, I was able to find one fight. The quick breakdown is she started UFC. She started training late. Got into Brazilian Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. She was at a gym, and basically, at least the way her bio reads. The trainer was like, I bet you can't out grapple one of my black belts. And she said, okay. And I actually beat the person probably by doing some white belt, you know, juju crazy. Sh- yeah. But either way, she got into it that way. I guess she, she I think she's married to a fighter. I was trying to find out who, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't find it. Basically though, she is a legit BJJ black belt, but like that, especially on the women's side, the big hole is her, is her, um, is her striking. I can't. I couldn't find anything on it. I have no idea what she looks like on the feet. Um, the takedowns I saw, her ground game looks very strong. We're now, I don't think she's a black belt yet. I think she's brown. I think I know. I know she was a um, IBJJF purple belt world champion. So she's probably a brown belt. I don't know if she has her black. From what I can tell, there is footage of Bernardo de Oliveira on the ground. She looks legit down there. I think from what I can tell. She's better than Renault on the ground. I would assume Renault is the better all-around fighter, though, striking, putting it all together. I have a problem picking 40-year-old fighters as it is. So all those things together and the fact that I think especially, again, DraftKings in the pit. I don't. I think Renault is overhyped. I don't think she's as good as everyone else thinks. She should be better than this girl, though. But for whatever reason, I'm thinking this fight could go to the ground or... Dion Alvaro is going to be desperate to get it there, and it's going to play out. Renault's going to beat her up on the feet, or if it goes to the ground, I think Dion Alvaro can get a sub. I'm willing to take the shot on the dog because, fuck, I need dogs to pick in this card. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll take her, again, not super confidently, but of all the dogs on here, 
She's one of the most live. She's plus 250. Renault is minus 325. I actually sent out a tweet earlier. I'm going to, I'm trying to wait and find the De Oliveira by sub prop. And if it's got a decent price, I might put half a unit down on that. Uh, yeah, talk about uh, outliers. I mean, her win against Jessica Andrade was probably one of the bigger outliers you're going to see. Um, not to completely discredit it, but listen, she's done nothing since getting that big win. And so that usually tells you it's somewhat of an outlier. Uh, she's also been uh, out out taken down. Does that make sense? <laughs> she's uh, She's been on the negative end of the takedowns. She was taken down 2-0 to zero by Betch Cohea. Two to one by du- by Du de Lava. She Bet went one won that one fight. with Ashley Evan Smith. A fight that she has her as a split decision lost, but every, anyone who watched that fight knows that she won it. But regardless, it doesn't mean anything. And went one for zero with Holly Holm. So, yeah, I mean, I think if she does, she could get taken down three or four times by someone if they have a legit, legit, uh, you know, ability to get them down there. So that'll be interesting to see. Tony, that was the point. Sorry, that was, that was the point I wanted to make though. Is that Bet Cohea probably should have beat Marion Renault probably. Betch, with ground game, and Betch Cohea is no good. So I'll take a shot. True. <laughs> Mr. Tony? Uh, yeah, I, w- I would go with, you know, the obvious pick, Renault. Um, I don't see it being... She 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 does, a, you know, a decent job. Her taking on defense is nothing special, but she manages to most of the time when she is on the, on her feet. And uh, I, I think she should be able to handle, you know, a four and one fighter making her debut. That would be kind of sad if she didn't. Uh, and she's had some good wins, you know, over her career. I mean, I, you know, the Andrade one is is a little, little outlier, obviously, but Dufresne as well. And um, yeah, I, I don't have, I'm not, I don't have particularly strong opinions on this fight. I just, I just see Renault being able to outwork. Oliveira on the feet. I don't know if I have strong opinions about any fight on this entire card. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I can't I can't say that that's surprising. Um, I have a couple, but they're super chalky. So certainly not this one. I mean, I certainly don't have that type of opinion on this one. Um, all right, let's move on to the next fight. Here we go. We have Sayar Bahadurzada. Nice. I think I nailed it. Uh, Crushed take, it. Taking on okay, UFC.com has this incorrect. It's Wilkinson, correct, Sean? Correct. Yep. Okay. Full name? Rob Wilkinson. Rob Wilkinson. Uh, Tony, I'm gonna have you lead off at this one. Uh, <laughs> have you even had a chance to look in to Rob Wilkinson? When, when did Rob Wilkinson? Is this like two days' notice? Like what? What are we talking here? Does anybody know? I think it's about a week. I think. No, it's it's a month. I think a month. Somebody was, a month, UFC, somebody was a week. Jesus Christ. Like, the UFC.com even had Nick Hines still on today. Yep. Like, it's not like they haven't had time to fix it. Uh, they haven't had MMA in a month. They didn't care. Oh, Jesus. If they don't care, then why the hell do we care is what I'm asking. I mean, good Lord. Because we're sick. Because <laughs> I love the UFC, so I'm just going to deal with it. Uh, all right. Tony, lead off. I- what? What do you got? I, am I able to defer to Sean on this one? And, uh, <laughs> give me, give me I your mean, I, I'm still, uh, I'm still looking into yeah Rob Wilkinson here right now. So what do we know about him? What do we know about Rob Wilkinson? He is a monster wrestler. Okay, I else? like this. I like this kid a lot. He's actually, um, he's a middleweight on the regional circuit. He's 11 0 eleven and zero out of Australia. He's a legit prospect out of Australia. He's eleven and zero all finishes. Oh, right. Seven first round finishes. The four, I don't only see seven because the other four in topology, they don't have the round listed, which leads me to believe it's first round, but I can't guarantee it. Um, he is, he's just, he's a strong wrestler who I think is going to just totally outwork Sayar Bahadurzada. This is one, this is the dog I probably feel the best about, and I don't feel great about it because he's on short notice, but I don't think Sayar is, is any kind of good. Um, Oh gosh! I mean, it's gonna end up- I mean, do you want to hear an incredible stat line? I, I'm sure you already know this, Sean, uh, Tony. When I don't know if you had a chance to look into Sayar, but li- listen to this stat line, okay? Dong Hung Kim, 23 strikes, three takedowns, one submission attempt, eight passes. Okay, this is in a three-round decision. 
Sayar, five strikes. That's it. Five yep. strikes with no takedowns, no passes, no nothing. Five strikes in three rounds. But then Kim only had 23 strikes. Good Lord. I, I need to go back and watch that fight. 20 total strikes there. in the entire fight. Go fight. watch he su- he sub Brandon Thatch in the third round, which Good means freedom. nothing. I'm pretty sure I could sub Brandon Thatch. That means nothing. I'm relatively sure. Um, yeah. The one interesting thing well, is Bahad Rizada. He's from. Well, I mean, in his debut, he made a. He... Go ahead. I was just going to say, in his debut, he was really. I, I'm remembering his debut was very impressive. Yes. I think it was one of the best knockouts. Uh, you know, as far as debuting fighters, it was really short short work for him versus Paulo Tiago. Yeah. Um, that's the only really thing I can remember about him, though. Yeah, yeah. He um he fights out of the Netherlands, which is interesting because this card is in Rotterdam. So, okay, maybe I just I I like grinding wrestlers like Wilkinson. I like that style for mixed martial arts. I I actually think as a prospect, he's just better than this guy. I think it's close, but and as a dog, is plus one twenty five. Um, I have a bet on it, and as the dogs go, I like Wilkinson. I, I think I I think I just want to pick against uh, Sayar regardless. I mean, I think yep. I, I don't I don't I I I've seen at least two of his fights. I've never seen that Dong Hung Kim fight, thank God. But I, I've I've seen the two right above it, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's really not a whole lot there. So I mean, if you're telling me that there's a a, a decent prospect coming up the ranks, you know, uh, certainly one that is going to be able to get takedowns. Cause that seems to be what the, what the kryptonite would be there. Uh, yeah. I mean, I would probably lean on that as well, but again, I, I need to actually look into it. I don't, I don't, I know nothing about this guy. Picking against Baja Rizada is always a good strategy. And it's one I use usually for two other guys on this card, but they're fucking fighting each other. <laughs> Can I guess? Yeah, go ahead. Is it uh, the Holbrook fight? Yes, the, the the one I've been posting about constantly. <laughs> oh, I don't. I tried to watch film. Listen, and I, throw I, up. I I mute you on Twitter, so you know I don't ever. Oh, see that. that's that's uh-huh. nice. That's that's real sweet. <laughs> Way to help me out. You, you know grow my brand. that's not Dick. true. Um, all right, let's go to our main event. This is actually kind of a cool fight. Uh, may, may, maybe I'm buying into it, but I really love this idea of like the tallest fight in UFC history. Like I, I think it's a really cool idea. I think Volkov is like six foot seven or something, and Struve is seven foot. So I love it. I love the idea, uh, and, they, and they both have relatively similar records as far as the numbers are concerned. Uh, Struve has a couple more fights, of course. He's thirty two and eight. Volkov is twenty eight and six. Um, I don't think they have any shared opponents or anything. Um, but anyway, this, the, you know, this is a cool fight to make. I'm, I'm glad they put it together. I mean, good Lord, look at the reach in this fight. Stefan Struve, 84 inches, Volkov, 79. I mean, just this is, this would be a cool fight to watch. Um, so yeah, again, it's Alexander Volkov taking on Stefan Struve. Uh, Stefan Struve's last fight, uh, was a win, a submission win. Over, uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name, but regardless, I can't ever pronounce that one. Again, yeah. seen him fight, I don't know, six times or something. I mean, still can't pronounce it. Um, we just call him Daniel, because why would you call him by his last name if you can just call him Daniel? Um, but anyway, uh, you know, <sighs> Alexander Volkov seems to be the name that I think most people are going to want to go here, just because he's the newer guy on the scene. Um, you know, there's a little bit, we, we've kind of seen Stefan Struve ceiling for the most part. So you, you kind of, I think Dude. people are wanting to pick against him. Go ahead, Tony. Struve, Struve has been in the UFC like for so long. He's been pre UFC 100. Yeah. yeah. He's 12 and six, which caught me off guard. Yeah. In I mean, the UFC. Yeah. I mean, but that's, I mean, he's been in the UFC since 2009, you know? Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, that's why I think, that's why I think people are going to just automatically just kind of pick against them. I mean, again, you've seen the ceiling there. So when you have a new guy and they even have a similar shtick in that they're really tall, right? Like I, I think, I think people are shifting over to the Volkov direction and I, I'm not seeing it. 
I think Stefan Struve yeah, wins this fight. Yeah, I'm not seeing it either. I think oh, Stephen good. Struve, I have all cause. All right. I think Stefan Struve wins this fight, and, and I I would say of any card, of any fight on this entire card, I would say this is the one I'm the most confident in. Can I ask you why? How do you think he wins? Uh, I think I, I think he could knock him out. Uh, I, I know we haven't seen that from Volkov, and you know he obviously didn't get he didn't get knocked out by, you know, by Roy Nelson, uh, which I understand that that you know that that means a lot, but you know he also who was the last person that Roy Nelson knocked out besides Antonio Silva? He he didn't even knock out Alistair Overeem, you know, who was in the height of his chin issues there. You know, he's in there with. But Czech Congo didn't get knocked out. Sure. What you, I'm talking about Volkov. Volkov. I'm, I'm sure. looking, the last time he was knocked, he was finished was, oh, I forgot about that. That's right, 2013. And that um, he was the Bellator heavyweight champion. For he those was. Who don't know. Which, I mean, good out. Lord. That's about as pointless. Like, like say, saying that yeah. you were the Bellator heavyweight champion is like saying, like, I was going to use a really inappropriate analogy that I'm not going to say, but it means nothing. We'll just we'll just we'll just leave it at that. He's been knocked out just once for a heavyweight with almost 30 fights. He's also never fought Stefan Struve. I mean, you know that's also. you know it's kind of like every year you see this. You know, for the fantasy football season is uh, ramping up here. Both of you are in my Twitter league. Thank you very much. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, but you see it every Eastern year. Finger. Yeah, you see it every year in fantasy football where people go, you know. Like Gronk is facing the the Redskins, right? And people will say, "Well, the Redskins have the number one tight end defense." And you go, "Yeah, because they've never faced Gronk. They haven't faced Gronk yeah. yet this season. Once but, they face but, Gronk, they'll no longer have the number one tight end defense." But, so but you're like, making it like that's against an average tight end. You take it in, into account, and I think Struve is average. You can't compare sure. Struve to like Struve's not in Gano. Who is who is the last guy that Struve knocked out besides Antonio Silva? He doesn't uh, finish. He doesn't he knock out fin- a lot of people. Well, the last guy he knocked out was Stipe Miocic, of all things, besides Silva. Right. But that's a that's an outlier. Again, we got to remember these outliers whenever you see them. It's an outlier. heavyweight fight. Whenever you analyze any heavyweight fight, it's it's yeah. I guess. Um, I think. Go ahead, Tony. Well, I I think with Struve, I mean, I you know, early in his career, he was he was known more. You know, for the kickboxing, but man, his his uh, submission game has looked really on point. You know, as years go by, um, he's and he's got those those crazy long limbs, uh, which really helps him. I'm not, I mean, obviously he's fighting someone who's just as long and as big as him almost. But, but I think that might help. Uh, the, the the grappling of of Roy, ne- if Volkov can keep Roy Nelson off him, who is everyone seems to forget a world class grappler. I don't. I don't think Struve but, is going to pose much of a threat. But Struve is also very good off his off his back. That's that's the other thing. Yeah. Yep. Triangles and arm bars with those legs. Th- th- that is. I was going to get into my piece. That's what I'm worried about. Is I think, I think Volkov. Mm, I think he's got more power and he's more likely to finish. And I can never trust Stefan Struve. I just, I just can't trust the guy. Um, I think Volkov is the more likely to finish via knockout. However, if he has trouble with the length of Struve, I think he can get the fight to the ground. So he has a multiple pass to victory. Where I'm worried is that he's not able to get it to on the ground. Again, I think he can, but that's a worry if he can't. And once there, all these submissions Struve can throw up, throw up from his back. So that's, that's why I have Volkov, but it's tentative in that there's clearly ways Struve can win. I just I prefer Volkov. Yeah, I mean I don't really feel that confident. In, I mean Stefan Struve. It's, I, how how can you have an extreme amount of confidence in Stefan Struve in any fight? I mean, so I understand the sentiment, um, but I, I actually kind of think fighting a taller guy is gonna is gonna lend in his favor. To be honest with you, but we'll see we'll, we'll see how that one pans out. Um, but I am I am actually looking forward to that fight. I'm I am interested of again of all the fights on the card like that's the one that I'm the most interested in. So I'm looking forward to them being eye level with the camera guys who stand on stools. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's gonna be nuts. Um, all right, let's move on to the undercard here. Uh, before I do that, 
you know, let me let me give a shout out to uh, the Vobol real quick. Uh, anyone who's listened to any of these episodes, you you should know about the Vobol. Please go check them out. You know, get get better hand eye coordination, focus, reflexes, accuracy, timing, speed. Uh, you know, it, it does it all. You could train boxing, kickboxing. It's it's relatively inexpensive. It's easy to install. Doesn't take up much space. You can remove it easily. It's for any size room, any size house, condo. Doesn't matter. Uh, go check them out. It's t h e v o b a l l dot com, the vobal dot com. Okay, let's move on to the undercard. I, the undercard to me is much more interesting than the uh, than the main card here. So, uh, kicking us or, or not kicking us off, but um, the headline Ooh. according to UFC dot any- com. Go ahead. Can I can I tap out on this one? Oh. <laughs> On this fight or on the undercard? What was that? You want to tap out on this fight or tap out on the entire undercard? The, the undercard. <laughs> well, get on out of here, Tony. <laughs> I, I'll just leave with one thought. Uh, Mike Santiago that was on the Contender Series. Yes. Uh, you know, he's stepping in super late notice. Obviously, he was very impressive. On that in that fight on the contender series, but uh, this Zabit Magomed Sh- Shuripov cat, I've seen him fight quite a few times in ACB, and he is a straight killer. He's, he's huge for the division. It's crazy. And he's like his. He's he's six two and he's fighting at a hundred. It's insane. Uh, and I, I, this is as close to his lock as you can get. So if you're doing like parlays or anything. Definitely pick this one, in my opinion. Or if you want to look at the sub props, I haven't looked at them or anything, but I think that's another another good one. Well, very cool, man. Well, enjoy. Uh, I'm I'm a little bitter that you don't have to suffer through this with us, but that's all right. I don't mind. I it. would honestly. I think I'm having some kind of audio issues, or otherwise, I would totally suffer with you guys. Yeah. and cut my wrists while we <laughs> go through fights. We'll, but. we'll play some Hawthorne Heights in the background and just. Uh, <laughs> Um, all right, cool, man. Get out of here. Thanks so much for having me, guys. Uh, I can't wait to kill you guys in the draft tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, okay. See you tomorrow, bud. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> That'll be a fun league. I- I'm excited to uh, make- be a lot of shit talking. Oh yeah, man. Um, I give. You know what's funny is that Tony and I get along very, very well. Uh, we 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 don't have any. You know, there's nothing there. Uh, but man, we have gotten into the same argument like four times. So it just keeps recurring over and over again. It just happened again today. It's the only thing him and I ever disagree on, but we disagree on it over and over and over again. I have to ask, what is it? It's Demetrius Johnson, uh, the T.J. Dillashaw Demetrius Johnson saga. Him and I are him and I are on two on two very different sides. That that DJ is ducking. Yes, we, we both we both line up on two different sides. He he he, he lines up on the Demetrius Johnson has done nothing wrong. Uh, he's not ducking T.J. Dillashaw. He he was concerned about the weight, and I line up on the that's horse shit. Um, that's it. Yeah. Only thing him and I ever disagree on. So uh, I'm interested in playing fantasy football with him, so I can find some more things to get in fights with him about. The the, the way that should have been handled is is you book the fight, D.J. You shut up. You put you put Borg, uh, Borg on the same card with the understanding of the guy Borg is facing. That hey, if D.J. can't do this. Borg's get you know Borg getting the uh, title shot and your fight's canceled. Well, I don't think that I don't think that would have mattered. I don't. TJ Dillashaw wasn't or, or Demetrius Johnson wasn't going to do it regardless. Right, I agree with that. I think yeah. he was ducking him. I'm saying that's the way. That's what someone should have proposed. That's what Dana White because Dana White clearly has got no problem throwing DJ under the bus. I yeah. think he should have done that. Been like, listen, I'm going to book this. I'll do it this way and see what DJ's response would have been. And you should have done it all publicly, so that way, oh yeah, that way, that way, nobody could, you know what I mean? Nobody could twist mince words. He was um, he was too busy. He was too busy with this Mayweather McGregor nonsense. Yep, and that's what it was. Trolls nonsense. <laughs> all right, let's talk about the under the undercard. Excuse me, I got burps. Uh, Darren Till versus Bohan uh, Velichkovic. Velichkovic. Bohan Velichkovic. Also Nico known Musoke break dancer. Well, him and I do have the same nickname, which is Serbian Steel. Why the fuck is that your nickname? <laughs> it's not. My... Are you Serbian? <laughs> no, but my last name. God knows you're not Steel. Like my la- my last name's Steel, so I just figured, you know, 
People can just start calling me Kyle Serbian Steel. I might now, just just because. Listen, I, I have been isolated for quite some time now, so my jokes are suffering because of it. There's <laughs> I I have two kids. Back Every kid I add, my jokes get worse and worse. So, dad humor is a real thing. I've it really it is. Times. It's and half the people listening know exactly what we're talking about, and half are like, "Shut up." Yeah, right. I I pulled out a I pulled out a dad joke when I went to the doctor yesterday with my two kids. We, they both had doctor appointments, and uh, I I went back, and they they asked for their she set their birth dates. Like to verify, like you know, Harper and Henry Steele. Then she said their birth dates, and I said, "Yeah, last time I checked." <laughs> and uh, Ooh, and she looked, o- yeah, she looked over and she kind of gave me the everyone says that every every dad that's ever walked in here with their kids has made that same joke about their children's birthdays. And then I went, "Oh, I'm getting old." Yeah. So I had that. I had that big long. All of that happened in my mind within the within about thirteen seconds. Um, (laughs) All right, Darren Till. See, we just said it, and I still can't do it. It's crazy. It happens. It's uh, Bohan Velichkovic. His last fight. I quickly referenced that he's the one who was was about five minutes away from being bounced out of the UFC. Punched Nico Musoki in the top of the head. Made him do a funny break dance because. Who knew that was Musoke's button? Oh God! They, and, see, that's one we and all cost we, me and cost yeah. me money on that. We were one. all in. We were all in on Musoke that fight. And he he was it. He didn't look. It was probably one one. Could have been. No, I think remember it, it was probably one one. Musoke did not look as good as I thought he was going to after that layoff. But I figured, okay, he's going to win this round, win a decision. Vel- Velikovich is going to go home and you know I'm going to skate by with Musoki and that'll teach me and then yeah. the weird break dance and shit happens Ugh. and what are you going to do that, that that was a weird card overall um well I'm I'm going yeah Darren Till he had a draw against Nicholas Dalby god he's 14 and 1 neither one this is the other fight I referenced the pace in the um, oh, that's two in a row. Yeah, you know, I said I said I said earlier that um, we're going to string of finishes, and I think we are going to get to them in a couple fights. But this one is right before Edwards Barbarena, and those two back to back would be some slow pace fights. I'm very worried about the pacing in this fight. Till is probably a little bit better. I think he has the advantages in the takedown. I'm not super confident about it. Um, just in that I don't think either one of these guys these guys are any good. Velikovich is lucky to be in the UFC. Till missed weight his last fight against Yes and Ayari, and then looked bad against Ayari. Granted, Ayari is awkward, so I'm interested to see how he'll do against a more orthodox guy like Velikovich. But so I'm gonna pick Till because Serbian steel sucks, but. I'm hoping Till shows me more or has some kind of more output than he's shown me in his last in his two UFC fights because it, it's a little worrisome. Well, and I'm also interested how Darren Till even went to a draw with Nicholas Dalby. I mean, uh, he probably should have just straight up lost. Um, but I, 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 if I remember correctly, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I was just going to start to analyze it, and I realized how irrelevant it is. Um, yeah, I'm also going Darren Till here. I I just in general think he's the better fighter. But this is good matchmaking. First of all, it's two guys with a draw, which is interesting, uh, and it's also guys who have beat you know kind of nobodies. Um, I would say that Till's wins have been more impressive to me, but by God, that's not saying much. Um, that's also my hate for Dich Rico. So he sucks. Yeah. Uh, anybody that has that close of a fight with Gareth uh, should, should not be in the UFC. Um, yeah, not much more to say on that fight. I don't even know how we're even going to do a DraftKings team. I mean, this it's, is you'll see that I, I looked at the prices earlier. It is. All I haven't even done it. I haven't even looked. It is. It's interesting. You can do it. You had you had to take a couple a couple shots, and th- there's a couple. We're getting to a few locks. There's yeah. going to be some. So I, I mentioned it 
quickly in the open. It's we're coming up at the part of the car that is the Chechnyan showcase. Yeah. All right. Well, there's a few guys who are scary. Let's move on down. Mary Beck, Tysuma versus Felipe Silva. Finally, some names that I know. Uh, you know, Felipe Silva's first fight. See, I when, when he fought Shane Campbell, I really that was a fight where I had picked Shane Campbell. Um, I I thought that Shane Campbell was going to be able to to get it done. Um, he obviously did not. Uh, you know, so that kind of impressed me with Silva. Um, but you got to watch out about that because that can cause you to have bias when you think a guy is going to beat a guy, and then you know the other guy wins. You then get this bias toward the other guy, even though you know that doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Um, you know, but convert. I mean, Tysimov, I mean. You know, this is a good fighter. This is a good fighter who's who's built up, you know, qu- quite a record and and um, obviously had a very impressive debut fight. And uh, you know, he, he's coming off of two straight performance of the nights. You know, against Alan Patrick and, and um, I don't I don't know how to pronounce the other guy, but Demir, um, his last fight in April there. Hadzovich. Hadzovich. Um, so uh, yeah. Anyway, with all that said, I'm going to go Tysimov. I I picked against Silva last time and I lost, but I think uh, Tysimov is worlds better than Shane Campbell, so I I feel a lot better about <laughs> about the pick here. Yeah, Felipe Silva has this is this is the first real test. He's fought a bunch of nobodies, um, bad competition. Shane Campbell is one in, one and three in the UFC. Um, before that, Felipe Silva, I was digging in around to opponents and it's MMA math, but it's um, his last opponent, his last win before that. That guy lost to um, Thibaut Gowdy, who's on this card, who's also – that's going to be depressing once we get there, but more on that later. Um, this is his first real test. Tice him off. My one worry with him is he recently withdrew from a fight because of a shoulder injury. Sure. I wish I knew more about the shoulder injury. That is really what I'm – the only thing I'm worried about. He should – like a bunch of these res- wrestlers just take down and beat the shit out of their opponents. Um, but that's the worry. That's why I'm gonna have probably a little bit less of Tysimov than I normally would. And there's a few other Chechen Russians, Chechenians, whatever they're listed as, who I think are more secure. But the pick is Tysimov. Yeah, and that's probably all that needs to be said about that fight. So let's move right along. Let's get to Michelle Prezeris taking on Mads Burnell. Uh, talk to me about Burnell. I think most of us are familiar with Prezeris, so talk to me about Burnell. Mads Burnell is a featherweight prospect. Um, he's he's gonna he seems okay on the feet. He's actually so I say he's a featherweight prospect. He's fought at featherweight and lightweight, and it's really interesting. This fight, by the way, is at lightweight. It's interesting in that when he fights at featherweight, he gets finishes, and when he fights at lightweight, he goes to decision. So that should tell you what you need to know about his power. There's a weird, and it could just be coincidence, the guy he's fighting, but it's, it's split that way. If it's lightweight, he gets a decision. If it's featherweight, he'll get a finish. Um, Prejaris is a lightweight who probably hits more like a Walter Wright. Yeah. Like he is, he's a big dude. Yeah. Um, big guy. Plenty of, plenty of ground hasn't, no- hasn't knocked anybody out in a hot minute, but, but still. Only 9% of his wins, but he, he he just looks like he hits hard. Maybe he loses something there, but he looks like he hits hard. Yeah. What's more impressive to me is the ground game. The stats are inflated because of a few fights, but he's got the yeah, averages. The, Bur- the Berkman point, win being one of them. Four point. That one that wasn't even that bad. Like it was only two takedowns. Twenty four. So yeah, but it was twenty four to. I see. I see what you're saying. The takedowns are inflated. the takedowns. He but took he, down Gilbert took Burns down, five times. Took down J C Cottrell seven times. Uh, JC runs took down seven, Kevin yeah. Lee three times, which is kind he, of interesting. There's there's an even more impressive one. Uh, one Tysimov. He took down Tysimov three times and won that fight. By took the way, took Jesse Ronson down seven times. Took uh, t- uh, Tiago down twice. Every single fight he's taken down at least once. He is DraftKings gold, and yep. I I just don't think. I think I agree. Yeah. If um. So really, it's just you have to tell me about. Yeah, I mean, you already kind of told me about Mads Burnell. I mean, that's I don't think really what matters him. here. Do you think he's going to be able to stop him? Nope. I think he'll be. He could technically probably stand his ground on the feet. I think it's not a blowout there, but I think when this gets to the ground, um, that's going to be a problem because Preseris, okay. Preseris just got his first sub 
in a long time against uh, Berkman and shout out to MMA Profit. That was the one that Profit put like a quarter of a unit down at like plus a thousand or something stupid because just Prezaris is a high level guy who for whatever reason hadn't gotten subs. Like he clearly has the skill set and yeah. that hit and he made a bunch of money on that. So that was, that was one of his better calls. I really liked that one. Um, but yeah, I just don't think Brunel is going to be able to this gets to the clinch of the ground. I would be stunned if Brunel can hold his own. Yeah. Well, the next fight, I'm going to say, uh, if I'm if I'm making a, a a large bet, I'm going to say this one goes to a decision. <laughs> the rest of Kabbalah, Desmond Green. I can't imagine that this fight uh, ends in a finish. Maybe you disagree. Um, but anyway, Rustam, Kabbalah's got a finish recently. Uh, rest of Kabbalah. Uh, didn't he finish? Russell um, Kabloff has not had a Michelle? finish since Yancey Medeiros, which was a doctor stoppage. Am I thinking of the wrong fight? Uh, Rustam Kabloff versus Desmond Green. I thought I thought I thought Habilov had a stop over Vince Pichel. Maybe that wasn't recent. Vince Pichel, I think, was uh, Michelle Prezeris. Um. Huh. Um. Let me look. I just saw Vince Pichel's name, but it's not it's not Kabilov. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah, it was, but it's way back in 2012. Oh, okay, got it. Sorry, I'm, I must have. Yeah, that, that that was. You know what? It's because the UFC tweeted that. Tweeted uh-huh, it out was today. Vince Pichel. Well, Vince Pichel was before Anthony Medeiros, so he yep. had two. He had two straight first round uh, finishes. Um, all right. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I I really think this fight goes to a decision. I think that's a pretty. That's going to be a pretty basic bet. I, I couldn't. What, what what are the odds for that? What are the odds for Desmond Green, uh, Kabilov by decision? Let's see here. What the over? I can't tell you. I'll get to the decision. The over is at minus three fifty. So decision's probably minus four hundred. Yeah. Yeah. The over two and a half is minus three fifty. Yeah. Exactly. So. Oh, decision is minus three twenty. I did the math wrong. Minus three twenty. Yeah, but I'd say the oh, the decision should be somewhat less than the over. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so yeah, that's. I mean, they they obviously agree with me wholeheartedly, um, which makes either one of these guys interesting because they are going to make it. I don't. I don't think this can be finished. I think you could have a lot of takedowns here, but it's going to be a grappling fest. I think this is going to be a very one sided fight. I, I got Hobby Lob as well. I think he's. I think it's going to be very, very one-sided um, for for Hobby on Hobby Love's favor. I, I was waiting for you to say something different, but yeah, he's just no. he's just too good. I also was so incredibly unimpressed with Desmond Green. In One his, takedown against Josh Emmett, yeah. yeah, and his debut against Josh Emmett was so unimpressive to me. He he lo- he looked awkward. I know it's his debut, but he looked awkward. He barely beats Josh Emmett. You know, he gets he, the one takedown. Emmett, Emmett was, I, I mean, I've never seen, Emmett was so incredibly gassed by the time that last round came around. And Desmond Green looked fresh and still couldn't really get anything going. And so, how much of it, though, is UFC jitters? We do have to wor- the one worrisome, not worrisome, is Desmond Green's strength is wrestling. I'm trying to find. Yeah, but I don't think it's going to, I don't think it's going to matter against a guy like Kabilov. Exactly. I mean, I, I totally agree. I mean, Division when, one when you say Chris Wade's, Chris Wade's strength is wrestling too, and, and he, he took him down yeah. six times and out outstruck him two to one and had four passes. So yeah, I I just think this is going to be a very very one sided fight. You know, what? I'm reading Desmond Green's stuff. He's Division one All American. Yeah, but and it says two time MAC champion. The MAC isn't anything great. Three time finalist, ranked as high as number eight in the nation junior year. For now, that reads funny. If you don't know, um, to be an All-American wrestler, you must be top eight in the national tournament. So that means once he was ranked eighth in his junior. So once he was barely an All-American. Not not that that's not super impressive, but you're just trying to get an idea for comparison against a guy like Hobby Love. Yeah. Who, if if wrestling's your strength and he's better than you at it, you're in some deep, deep shit, buddy. Um, I did see somebody who... I respect put a bet down on Desmond Green. I just I disagree with it wholeheartedly. The odds are a little wide though. It's minus three hundred for Hobby Lob, Desmond Green plus two fifty. 
No, nah, you know what? I might bet Hobby Lobby was like if he was minus two hundred, but the odds are probably about right. It's too rich for me to be putting money down at minus three hundred. Maybe it's a leg of a parlay, but nah, I think Hobby Lobby's pretty safe. Yeah. Um. All right. Yeah, I I I think that that's uh, I think that's a safe assumption. Um. All right. Let's move on down the card here. As if we, if people are still listening to this, God bless you. God, Please still listen. God, God you, bless you if you're still listening to this. You can hear me. Well, there is. You know, we should have let off with this. There is. It's a small card. There's a lot of money on DraftKings this week because it's the first. We it's the first go around back. There is more. There's bigger tournaments than I thought there were going to be. Wow. Well, and, and this is a week if you can try to get some good reads. So let, let's move down. Frank, Frank Amar uh, Barroso, we obviously know his name. He's taking on a newcomer. And Alexander, I think it's Rakic. It's close enough. This, it's one of the names I don't know. Yeah. Um, so talk to me. I'm trying to actually find the prices on this one, yeah. So Barroso is, Bajoso, how do you say it, is 7700 And he's interesting to me. Um, he is... He recently had um, the two fights against Darren Stewart, where he got that weird headbutt knock. Uh, he was knocked out oddly by a headbutt um, in like 15 seconds of the first round, and then they got had a rematch. It was ended up being a no contest. Obviously, the first one, the rematch. He took down Darren Stewart seven times. He's taken down. Would you believe me if I told you that? Of all people, Frank Amar Bahoso has taken down, took down Nikita Krylov twice. Wow, I wouldn't have thought that. That's like, crazy. I saw that stat and I went, "Really? He? Ha- I mean, he he lost the fight. He got he got subbed out. He's thirty seven. His opponent though is um, he's eight and one. He's a young twenty five year old. Seven wins by KO. He hadn't had a fight since 2014, 2015, and he had his return." In 17, he fought a no-name kind of to work himself back into it. Now he's getting a UFC fight. I just, the experience is on Bohoso's side. He's the underdog at plus 105. Not that he's somebody you can, you know, obviously I'm saying it the whole the whole card. Not a great fighter, but this is one of those times, I'm not sure if the odds are quite right. I would have probably flipped him, and it's a small difference being a minus 125 favorite and a plus 105 underdog, but it's enough on this card on DraftKings to put you firmly in play I, especially in dra in cash games when you want to kind of if you want to steer away from barbarina i think bohoso scores even in a loss i don't i mean rocket finishes nobody's maybe he'll finish bohoso but it, it's hard for me to see um his last this fight for me feels like a decision i think bohoso is going to try and wrestle him i think he'll have a little bit of success it'll go to a decision I think, and I'll take, but I'll take the shot on Bahoso. Yeah, I, but I, I, and I, I don't know if it's necessarily a shot. I mean, I think he should be the clear guy that that takes this. I mean, there's there's no reason that he won't. He's the underdog, and it's and he is. I think he's. It's very odd. I think there's a pretty significant height advantage for Rockich. R- Rockich is one of the is one of the guys in this card. I tried to find some stuff. I couldn't find a ton. That's why I say it's a shot because I wish I knew more about his opponent. But sometimes I'm I'm gonna keep looking. Um, but as of right now, it's a it's an educated analysis where Bohoso. I don't think the price and odds line up. That's yeah. why I call it a shot. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, okay, moving on down. So this is the Mike Santiago fight we we're talking about, and, and you guys both ugly. you ugly. guys both share the sentiment that the Magomed Sharapov uh, should, it. should kind of just walk on through. He should. Santiago, he fought Dana White, who's in a contender series, is filmed in Las Vegas. I think most people listening to this know that. He fought last Tuesday. He is fighting in Rotterdam on Saturday. Fuck. Yeah. He, against a guy who is at featherweight. Six foot one, six. No, UFC has him listed at six foot three. Tabology has him at, at six one. So we'll split the difference. I think Tony said six two. So 
somewhere. He's over six feet fighting at 145 pounds. He should wrestle fuck Mike, Mike Santiago for three rounds. And unless Santiago gasses out, that's what I think is going to happen. Good luck. I, 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 from what I've seen of this kid, he is the real deal. Yeah. All right. Well, just so cool, big. Man. He's yeah. so big. I'm, I'm all about it. I, I'll take it. Uh, when, when we make the DraftKings team, we'll start there. I, I got, I got no problem with that. I haven't seen. Don't tell me the prices because I don't know yet. We'll get there in a minute. Um, He's not the most expensive. We're going to get there. I mean, I don't want to talk the, like of all like of all the fights that we have talked about. I'll tell you the two that I'm the least interested in. It's the next two. Um, do you think there's going to be a finish in either one of these? Uh, so we have yes. Bo, 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 the Bohan fight. Yeah, Bohan's getting finished. Okay, that's what I thought as well. So okay, well, talk to me about that. So it's Bohan taking on Abdul Karim Edilov. Edilov is a combat sambo guy. He's one of the very few guys that I'm vaguely familiar with here uh, of the unknowns. He's the one I'm the most familiar with. And uh, yeah, he, he's going to get a finish. <laughs> so, but I mean, I, again, I'm just, I'm just not excited about this. I guess at least they're not throwing him to the wolves. You know, I, I guess I'll give him that. I'll give the UFC that. They don't want to throw or, the guy to the wolves. Well, Bohan Mihailovic is the guy they throw to the wolves. They threw the guy to fucking Nganu. Then they try and give him Christensen. He gets finished there. Like, he's a tough guy, but he's just the one worry. Now here's here's you have to check yourself for a second. Is is Edelov has not fought in over two years because of a torn meniscus. That makes me worry. Now he dominated the the Russian he's Chechenian guy he is he just ran through people I'm trying to before that one two three four five six straight fights he finished in the first round some good some some not so good he's part of the uh, Ahmad Fight Club he's legit he is clearly legit he should be as big a favorite as he is but I I just two years over two years with a torn meniscus. Mm. Yeah. It's a good thing Bohan Mihailovic sucks. So Edda lost the pick, but I just I, you have that momentary pause of hmm, what if? How's his knee? Is he going to be cautious? Is it going to take him a while to get going? Especially I won't give away the price, but it's large on DraftKings. Um, he needs a first round finish to come close to paying it off. Okay. Well, thank you, sir. So, yep. Uh, and then <laughs> your, fa- your favorite fight of the night. Goody is taking on Andrew Holbrook. I assume loser goes home is my best guess. They should both go home. I mean, Andrew both. Holbrook has had – he beat Rams in the gym. He beat Jake Matthews. Uh, because he beat Jake Matthews, he got – I think his name got inflated. Jake Matthews is not very good. Um, he's lost to Joaquin Silva. He, they fed him to Gregor Gillespie, who I think is is primed to be a champion in this weight class. Uh, so then he got – yeah, now he faces Goody, who is pretty terrible. Uh, Gillespie, by the way, just about, Gillespie, he, I don't know, a champion's a bit strong, but either way, wasn't he a guy who's going to wrestle you to death? He yeah. knocked out Andrew Hel- Holbrook, and like, it took him eight strikes. Yeah. Yeah, man. No, that's that's no joke. Gowdy Holbrook is just... Fuck. That, that's what this fight is. Gowdy, by the way, only... Is still in the UFC because he got a rare four fight deal, and I can't remember which fight it was. Was it the the priest fight where they it's some some one of the one of his opponents constantly missed weight? I can't remember who it was. He took a fight against the guy who misses weight frequently, and his insurance policy was okay. I'll take this fight, but I want an extra fight added to my contract, and the yeah. UFC did it. Um, the one interesting thing out here, I, I'm actually going to pick Goody, and it makes me sick to say it, um, and I'm going to look back. So Chad LaPriest knocked him out, but he looked decent in the Olivier Aubin marcier fight. Mercier got three takedowns, eventually won the fight in the third round, but that was a, a decent showing for Gowdy. Um Again, I I just looking at both of them, I think Holbrook, even though he's two and two in the UFC and Gaudi is zero oh and three, and been stopped all three times. I think that Gaudi can do enough to stock 
stop the takedowns of Holbrook because Mercier is a better grappler than Holbrook. And Holbrook is so goddamn chinny. I just mentioned that's the deciding factor in this one that leans me towards Gaudi. Don't come after me on this one if I'm wrong, but I'm, I'm going to pick Gaudi because Holbrook is just so, so chinny. And this is a fight that the fight started at 1130 a.m. Eastern time on Saturday. Like this will make you want to drink before noon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, all righty. What else we got here, man? Let's build a DraftKings team and get the hell out of here. Let's get the hell out of here. Um, all right. Give me one second while I figure out what is happening. I have, this... I have it up in front of me. All right. Yep. Go ahead and get started and yep. why I pulled mine up. So this week, we usually go top down. We abso- I'm telling you with the stars and scrubs, you really need to build from the bottom up. Oh, no. We normally build bottom up anyway. Do we? We do. Okay, well, that's smart because this is going to be interesting. So, starting us off, cheapest, Bohan Mihailovic. No. 6700 for him. 6800 for Mads Brunel against Michelle Prezeris. No. No. Mike Santiago, 6900 against Magomed Sharapov. Here, Probably me, not. Here, give me one second. Tice him off at 7000 There we go. Probably not. I have it pulled up. I'll, I'll take it from here. Oh, All right, I'm doing a terrible job. I'm getting, We're, I'm getting tired. Oh no, you're good. I just, I feel, <laughs> I feel uncomfortable not leading it. We're not taking Santiago. We're not taking Silva. We're not taking Bernardo. We're not taking Green. First time I come up to is Brian Barberena, but I don't want to take him, man. I just feel like, I feel like it's chalk. I feel like okay. it's chalk. Uh, I don't want Bohan, but. But, but by the way, you, you passed Bernardo too quickly for me. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. We already talked about that one. Um, okay, I'll think about that one. Let me let me kind of see what I'm looking at as I move up. Um, yep. it gets ugly. God, it gets ugly. I don't want Goody either. So then you go to Barroso is the first one that makes sense to me. But see, I like three in a row there. See, I, got, I, I can't play Struve. I can't. Can you play Barroso and Wilkinson? I could. I, mean, I would prefer those two. I don't like Stefan Struve. I think Volkov's going to win the fight, so it's hard for me to play Struve. Uh, well, I, me... I would go Bahoso and Wilkinson. So Barroso, Wilkinson, now let's go all the way to the top, get the guy that's fighting Santiago. Okay. So now we got to take, yep, Stars and Scrubs it. we got to take one more. So I think that's where you pop back down to Bernardo. I'm cool with taking her because I think it's going to allow me to get the rest of the team that I want. And I would say of everybody down there, that's one that makes the most sense. And I imagine will be the lowest played. You're still going to have a problem here. So let's go back up. There's still not enough salary. Jesus. Okay, well, let's go back up. Andrew Holbrook is 8,800. Go fuck yourself. Well, if you play Kabilov, see, if you play Kabilov, you could play Darren Till. Oh, God, that hurts. Yeah. If you play Kabilov, you could play Darren Till. Uh, if you play. See, I don't want to play I, Leon. Edwards. I would rather squeeze in Prejeris or Edelov and then pivot down from Bohoso to, like, someone else. Okay, well, if you play Prezeris, like then who do then you feel better play... against about Prezeris or? Well, maybe... I feel I feel really good about Prezeris, but uh, then you have to play. Then you just have to play Volkov and call it a day. Or would you rather? Ugh, God, yeah, DraftKings sucks this week. It's 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 challenging. It's it's very. I think it's interesting. Even if I even if I don't make money this week, which is obviously always the goal, this is a good it's a good brain exercise. I think for those looking to get better, you should always go back and look at your lineups. It's going to be a very interesting review process. Yeah. Ugh. 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 Um. Okay. Who do you feel? The, the only, so what, I would say Barroso is who do. I feel. 
I feel much more confident in Rob Wilkinson, I think. Uh, yeah, I would say if you take out Bahoso, you can get down and play Barbarino, which I don't love, but of my options down there. I mean, that's the only one that makes sense. And then you right. pop up back up to Rustin Kovalov. Yeah, I mean, that's what you got to do. I'm just worried that Barbarino has got to be just such a chalk play. But And I get that, but if he's the only one who scores 65 points in that range, you now have to have him to win. Yeah, that's true. And he very well could, man. Uh, you know, those, those, strappy guys, those scrappy guys, you got to watch out with them. Yeah, it, it really is. Like, that is, you're not wrong. It's the dilemma this week is, I think, the hinge point is, there's two hinge points. One at the top, one at the bottom. It's Brian Barbarena. If he, he's going to be chalk, totally agree. If he wins, you now must have him to win. And he could be chalk enough in cash where you might need him to even cash in cash games. If he gets as chalky as I'm thinking. And then, so he becomes a pivot for the whole, whole card. And then it becomes towards the top. I think it, it becomes who gets the finish between um, which two are the right two to play of the 9,100, 9,200 and above. Tysimov, Edelov, Sherap- uh, Magomed Sharapov, and there's one I'm missing. And Habilov, he's 9,100. The guys over 9,000, you're going to need to pick the right two or three. It's very – it starts in scrubs, and you – there's going to be a lot of ties this week. Yeah. All right, man, plug yourself. Where can we find you? You guys can find me at the DFS Sniper on Twitter. Twitter, that'll get you access to my uh, YouTube page, which if you could please like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Much appreciated. Uh, I'm also going to be doing the – uh, on the Daily Fantasy MMA channel, Daily Fantasy Scramble. Um, by the way, what I have on my YouTube channel, I've gotten some really good feedback. If you listen to this whole thing, though, you can just jump over and like the video and comment. I would appreciate it. There's going to be, I do every fight, DraftKings picks 15 minutes. It's called the DFS Express. Or over um, on Friday, I do a lineup builder show where I'm going to build a cash game lineup. And Last week, it was exactly what I ended up rolling out on Saturday, and that UFC Mexico City card. I know I, I don't like bragging because I'm wrong plenty too, but we crushed that card, and I was really sad. We had a month long break. Yeah, man, real sad. And and Legal now I don't, and now I'm very nervous. We're not going to crush this one because <laughs> this is a this is a rough one. But I I like the, I like the way this team looks. It's very interesting. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how this one pans out, man. Uh, you guys can find me at Loudmouth MMA. Wherever you're listening to this right now is perfectly fine with me. I want to give a shout out to our uh, to our fans, man. Uh, you know our numbers continue to go up every single day, uh, and I just want to sincerely thank every single one of you who are listening to this right now. Uh, if you only listen to the breakdowns every single week, I would encourage you to go check out uh, the other shows we have. Uh, because they're they're good, and and it's not because of me. I assure you, uh, they're good because of who I have been able to surround myself by. So please please go check out those other shows. Speaking of other shows, like where's my invite to around the cage? Like what what's going on, dude? Here? I I think, you know, I, I I'm done with the show the personally. Are no, you? I'm done doing it. I just it's it's so hard. I'll I'll get this publicly. I don't care. I, like it's so hard. First of all, I got to come up with all the questions, which is a lot more difficult than you'd think, right? You got to come up with five kind of unique questions every single week. That was and, a good show, and it's hard to do. I see. I like it. The other thing is, it's hard to. It is hard to. To not to get people to do it, but coordinate everyone showing up on you gotta time. coordinate I, yeah. it every single week and it's it's new people all the time and it was just a lot it was a lot of work it was a lot of work and i really i just decided you know what i'd rather focus my attention elsewhere so maybe i'll keep it going maybe i just need a maybe i just need a couple weeks off here and then i'll keep it going I but didn't mean to bring up a sore subject I oh no, no it's not it's not a sore subject at all i made the decision not to do it so it's not like it's not sore to me i mean i'm i made the decision um, but if I do get it going again, you will be my first guest back on it. So it'll be you, Keith, Derek Bow, and maybe Jordan Killian. That sounds like a really good squad. So maybe, maybe we'll do one next week. You know what, Sean? Maybe we'll do one next week just for you. No pressure. Let's, no let's pressure. see. Let's see if I can get excited for it again. All right. You know All what? Right, man. 
hopefully this DraftKings team crushes and, and you're all excited about it. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> all right, buddy. Talk again soon. Take, take care. All right, bye.